Our good friend Jay Cox from St. Michael's Place, Pecan Street, Newport, Arkansas, joins us again as we do each and every month here on the Cable Channel 15 TV, on Facebook at Cable 15 TV, and around the world from a social media standpoint. How's Jay Cox today? Doing good. Doing good, good. to see you, my friend. Good to be here. I appreciate you taking time to join us and, and uh, uh, always talk about the things where we're taking care of folks who need help, and uh, that's what we do, and yes. it, it's been a real real difficult time with nursing home and, and, and long-term care facilities on, on how you know things are going but kind of tell us about what's going on at St. Michael's Place and, and uh, where we stand as far as visitors and, and you know so on and so forth but uh, I know everything's good but changes in the world are changes in the world. Uh, they are they are and it, it doesn't look like things are, are going to change anytime soon um, you know we when we thought uh, things were getting better. It seems like uh, here in Arkansas, the the numbers of the COVID cases are are rising, and uh, you know we actually uh, were all tested in our facility, uh, and uh, everything is still uh, in the negative. We we don't have any active cases in our facility, which awesome. is good to report. Um, we are so happy about that. We've worked very hard in the social distancing guidelines to. Um, make sure that our uh, residents are safe and secure and and uh, that's you know it's been a challenge from day one um, we've talked about this before um, and we did actually receive um, some clearance guidelines to uh, to start the process of receiving visitors um, however um, we actually get to use the discretion as to when we can allow that and right now with the rising number of cases in Arkansas, we just still feel like that it's not safe um, to allow those doors to be open yet. And so uh, we're going to continue with the lockdown um, for the time being just until we see uh, some falling numbers. Um, we just, right now, safety for the residents. Safety protocol, uh, yes. Is, right now is best. You know, these seniors are the most vulnerable um, that uh, of all the, you know, the community. And we just we just have to make sure that they are kept safe. And you know our employees, you know they go out into the community. So you know we have to do a health screening on them every time we come in and out of the building. And and uh, you know that you know is a potential exposure there. And so you know we have to uh, you know wear masks and different things and continue uh, washing our hands and and you know doing different uh, protocols to make sure that we don't expose them and so we have to be careful you know we encourage our staff to you know be sure and stay away from anyone that's been exposed um, you know then of course you know when you're out in public you never know when you cross paths with someone that you know that has been exposed so you know we have had to, to all work together as a team you know just to you know, keep that exposure risk, you know, at a minimum, knowing that we're coming into a home that's that's full of seniors. So, you know, we just feel like right now, uh, you know, bringing in even more people sure. to the home uh, is just an increased risk. And so at this point, we're going to continue with the with the lockdown and and uh, but, you know, you still can visit. Um, you know, we have a uh, front porch in our facility. It's got a great big window and uh, what we're doing is we're bringing the resident to the front window and uh, so the visual is very good even those that, that have uh, vision impairments that you bring them up to the window and then uh, we have plenty of cell phones or tablets and then we can um, uh, put you on speakerphone sure. with your loved one and <coughs> then that way you know you can they can hear well and they can see you right through the window. I mean you're almost I mean, yes, there's a barrier, but but you can see each other really well, and then talk on speakerphone, and so, no, it's not the same, and there's no contact, but there is a safety barrier, but you can see really well, and so you know, it's it's not the same, but you can come visit and and talk on your phone, and so you know, no, there's no hugging and touching and things, but at least you can see them and you can talk to them. And then, of course, for those that live out of state and things, we can do FaceTime. So, I was going to mention that, you know, yes. that is, uh, you know, technology is is helping. So, well, yeah, and you talk about the, the the visual, and I think sometimes that the audio, the talking, 
may be as important, if not more important, than the actual the actual video. I mean, when you see you, 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 a vision deal, but then you get to hear what, what, what your loved ones say, and they get to hear what you say. I think that's so important. It is, and, and you know, even with our dementia patients and Alzheimer's patients, even though they may not um, respond uh, to the questions you're asking, and they may not comprehend exactly what you're saying, inside, they know um, that voice. They know, Sure. Uh, I believe, you know, and, and I'm not a physician and, and I don't understand all of that disease process. You know, it's a mystery, but just knowing you're there and, and knowing that voice and knowing who you are, uh, you know, even if they, you know, forget a lot of things um, and even if that just for you know, even just for a moment, if they can recall, you know, who you are, just knowing that, that you're a family and, and, and that connection is made for a little bit for them, it, it does wonder. So, you know, uh, if you want to come see your loved one, you know, we can make that arrangement. You know, we'll bring them up front and, and p put you by the window, the front window. And, um, you know, you can, there's a, we have chairs out on the front porch sure. and you can sit there and talk to them. You don't have to feel rushed. And so, you know, it's not the same as being able to come into the building, but, but you know, it, it, at least there is something, you know. Yeah, I and, guarantee and so it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. Absolutely. And, and if it is raining, you can still, you know, it's, it's undercover. So, you know, the weather doesn't have to be a, a factor. And uh, so in its shade, if it's sunny. So, it, you know, uh, we understand that it's difficult, um, but we are trying to do our best to, to make a way. And then, of course, like I said, for those that are, way out of town, out of state, you know, we can do FaceTime visuals. So. I think another thing that we, we talked about it for a long time at, at, at St. Michael's Place, Jay, is that the, uh, you talk about the team and assembling of a team and, and boy, during a time where, where the, the world kind of just goes, you know, upside down or inside out or whatever the case may be, where it became very, very different. Uh, St. Michael's is on top of the strategies that it takes to take care of those folks. And I mean, it's yes. just another way to, to, to uh, make sure that uh, our family members get to see family members that are in, yes. you know, in, in, in the facility. Well, and, and another thing I want to touch on, and we don't, we don't touch on this a lot, uh, but um, when your loved one is reaching end of life, uh, and anyone that's looking into hospice care for your loved one, um, if your loved one is on hospice or end of life care, um, families are allowed to come in uh, two at a time and um, we, we bring your loved one down to a, a room that's away from everyone else. We have a room set up um, that they will stay in during those last uh, days or last hours. And uh, now you're not able to wander through the facility and visit right. others, but families can come into it at a time awesome. and, and spend those last days or hours with their loved one on hospice. And so uh, there are special, um, there are special um, exceptions made for okay. en end of life visitation and, and if they're on hospice. So, um, you know, if you're watching this and, and you're considering hospice for your family member, you don't have to go to a hospice house in another, in one of the bigger cities. You can do hospice care right here at St. Michael's awesome. and you are able to come in to the facility. So I wanted to kind of throw that out there that, you know, you don't have to go to Jonesboro you can do it right here and not have to make those trips back and forth. And uh, so you can come in and, um, and see your loved ones. So that, that is something else. Uh, and also we're still doing uh, short term, still doing rehab, still go. doing therapy. And so, uh, you know, we still have, you know, private suites available for those doing therapy. And also we need nurses and we need CNAs. So if you're looking for a job, come see us. We've got different shifts available. Come fill out an application. Can't come in, but if you'll come to the door, and let us know what you want. We'll bring you an application. Come fill one out today. We need we need some need some staff. So good good stuff, my friend. Yes, sir. I appreciate you taking time when you know out of your busy schedule to come by the office and get it done. And uh, uh, and I'm talking about the interview and to provide information to our general public. Jay Cox, my friend, always my pleasure. Yes, sir. Jay Cox, St. Michael's Place, Pecan Street in Newport.